Hi, this is Body Composition for Endurance Coaches. My name is Mel. Pause and consider this. What measurements do I use for my athlete's body composition currently? By now, you've discussed or thought about certain type of devices you're still using or you have used in the past. To measure body composition, I'm going to discuss <clears throat> ways you can relate and implement body composition to determine key injury prevention strategies. So body composition has to do with the fat mass, the bone density, as well as the muscle tissue in the body. That's the general answer for what body composition composes of. Now it's accepted as a key indicator for human performance. To your right, you'll notice all bodies may have the same weight. However, each one of the females to your right have a different body composition. Even though it's a group of females at 68 kilograms, the leg girth, the waist girth, as well as the ratio of fat-free mass to fat mass is very different. So general overview of body composition te techniques. Most of the techniques that we're going to discuss today are very common. Uh, the anthropometric measurements are typically seen even in uh, going to a tailor. Um, the general population environment can perform these tests themselves, not just the athletic environment. Now, the skin fold thickness is uh, different in the sense of what environment that's going to be in, as well as the hydrostatic weighing, which is also known as underwater weighing. The air displacement plasmography, which is known as the BIPOD, the bioelectrical impedance, impedance, which is the BIA, and the dual X-ray absorptiometry, which is known as DEXTA. Anthropometric measurements are typically performed in a sense of measure hip weight, <laughs> hip length, waist, or knee height. In addition to, you can do um, head girth, the width of it. And, uh, you know, typically for helmets, stuff like that. Those are anthropometric measurements. So for skin folds, when you think about what measurement this is for, um, we're looking at subcutaneous fat. So it's not, an, not as accurate as underwater weighing, though. However, it's considered a field measure, and it has a high feasibility for athletic environments. The drawback is that <clears throat> it, it needs a little bit of skill to master so uh, typically five and seven site is the, the norm. However, three site can be done. However, seven site would be performed with three consistent um, readings or measurements at each site to get a valid uh, test result. So it's in inexpensive and, and it's very portable, which this is a, a common technique I still use today. And that device to your right is a, a Lang uh, skin fold caliper. Now, the other device known, or sorry, the other technique known as underwater weighing is not as common unless you're in an exercise physiology lab. This is considered the standard. It measures body volume, so it assesses the fat-free mass to fat mass ratio, but it does not measure bone density. It utilizes a principle known as the Archimedes principle. This principle is if an object is placed in a tub, the object placed in a tub will displace the volume of water. So the information is placed in an equation to determine the fat-free mass by the measurement of the object in the water and the displacement. Now, another displacement technique is known as air displacement plasmography, or the bod pod. This measures body volume as well. So it assesses the two key components, which is fat-free mass and fat mass but it does not measure bone density. It utilizes air versus water because in underwater weighing, you're supposed to expel the air out. Whereas you're, you're dipping your head underneath the water um, and it is very uncomfortable to expel your air out in a situation you haven't expelled air out in that position. While in the bob pod, you don't have to expel the air out. <clears throat> it displaces the air volume inside of the device. So, it's an easier procedure to administer and compared to underwater wearing. However, the device is 32,000. 
even though it can accommodate larger teams and athletes, the price is the one consideration, which is why it's typically seen in exercise physiology labs, strength and conditioning centers, um, sports performance centers, as well as university sports performance centers and athletic training facilities. Now, these are opportunities for athletes to assess their body fat percentage. However, the consideration is that the, the con is bone mineral density is not assessed in this sense. Bioelectrical impedance or BIA is another common tool to utilize. To the top right, that is the BIA of the name known as the Omron. That is the current device I still use. However, the negative behind this device is you have to account for the standard error of estimate. And there is a, a current that's sent through the body. So you have to understand the, the timing of the food, like in terms of nutrition or hyperhydration or hypohydration considerations in terms of how much liquid that person has, has taken in during that time frame or day. So the low current is rarely felt, if that is a main consideration. To the bottom right, that is called an in-body 520. That device is seen, uh, I believe in Lifetime Fitness, there's an uh, in-body 520 and some other facilities too. However, that is a very user-friendly device with the printout and it gives you indication of limbs. But the standard error of estimate should be considered for that device. So a large portion of the body is water. So we are uh, major conductors, which is why that device is very um, easy to operate. It's portable and uh, quick to administer. The DEXA scan or dual energy X-ray absorption metry relies on X-ray technology. The pros to it is that it measures limbs and regions of the body. It also measures bone mineral density, which is, which is a big indication of stress reactions as well as overuse injuries uh, among endurance athletes. It's easy for the participant to administer and receive. The cons are it's expensive. Some states require a licensed technician to the perform the device or the scan, and there's slight radiation exposure. Now, the readout itself provides the coach and the athlete key indicators in the sense of how much fat mass do I have in a certain region? How much bone density am I improving in a certain region? Or am I going in reverse based on a number of negative one? to a positive number of positive one, indicating positive one, positive results, negative one, negative results. And that is a valid indication to assess stress reactions as well as other underlying hip abnormalities that is show up in, among endurance athletes. Sources of error um, that are commonly seen among these devices are in the conversion of uh, the equation converting <clears throat> some of these numbers has to do with understanding what is relevant in a sense of a formula to utilize for that specific device. For instance, the underwater weighing device does not have the same formula as the BIA or the BOTPOD or the DEXTAS. These are all different uh, formulas that are utilized. So electrical current prediction is uh, dependent on hydration status which is the common error seen in the standard error estimate associated with um, the <coughs> BIA, bioelectrical impedance device. And then knowledge is the common barrier. Training should be utilized in order to perform and receive these devices by, by teams or, or athletic facilities. However, in a private sector, uh, there's a limitation in training and knowledge on these devices. This is where the largest error occurs in interpreting the data that is received. Some of the top strategies to reduce these errors have to do with to utilize the relevant formula specific to that device and research a little bit more about the specific formulas specific to um, tape measurements as well as understanding skin fold formulas, which there are a number of websites to utilize plug in skin fold formulas. Now, Monitoring hydration status is another uh, limitation. However, improving hydration uh, status monitoring would allow the coach to implement um, a morning window to perform the test, which could be the early morning testing 
um, where the body is more so fasted as well as less liquids are inside the body to improve test reliability. So know the standard error estimate specific to device as well as the gender. That way you'll get a sense of what uh, gender equation is specific for that device. Now, how will this information be used to help your athletes achieve their goals? Athletes are often concerned with optimizing performance goals, but th they, they fail constantly to associate these key performance variables when you have to monitor certain goals. Um, the goals are typically designed around performance or numbers. Key indicators are um, weight. However, weight has to do with um, body fat percentage in relation to bone mineral density. So educating athletes on those um, key factors in the sense of body fat percentage measurements versus overall weight measurements would be one strategy. The reason for this might be practical uh, knowledge, but it might be the challenge, which is related to increased energy intake. And that's another topic to talk about um, basal metabolic rate and resting energy exposure, expenditure. And then the fear of gaining SX, excess body fat due to the lack of knowledge about weight. This is where uh, the theory or the concept of relative energy deficiency syndrome comes to mind. Relative energy deficiency syndrome has uh, key components listed above to the right that have to do with uh, psychological in addition to metabolic and endocrine, endocrine type disorders during training that associate with the athlete's breakdown or bone tissue breakdown. Now, as you can see, bone health is a key indicator which the triad um, the female athlete triad is not just for females. There are male athlete triad uh, cases and situations that occur. However, although the menstrual cycle dysfunctional um, diagram is shown next to the triad, don't let that be a key indicator just for females. So when you look at the issue of measuring bone health, would you consider utilizing a DEXA to identify and assess bone mineral density in order to improve bone health during performance goals for your athlete. These are helpful considerations. In closing remarks, body composition provides meaningful and transferable data. It's more reliable than traditional height and weight relationships when applied to human performance factors, regardless of your performance goals. Knowing limitations enables coaches to implement evidence-based concepts these are objective data, <clears throat> these objective data measurements allow the athlete to have confidence in their coach and confidence in their results. Also prevents underlying issues from arising and also prevents relative energy deficiency issues from arising, which can grow and metastasize to even worse uh, case scenarios. These are some of our references. If you like to learn more, feel free to follow us on Facebook Instagram, or Twitter. We also have a Dallas Sports Recovery website, which you'll learn more and will helpfully provide more insight along the way. Thanks.